Berlin, the German capital, is a 21st century metropolis in the heart of Europe. It has a long history, famous historic buildings and unique architectural monuments from various eras through to contemporary architecture. All these modern buildings and projects consist of quality controlled construction materials with selected characteristics, extreme resistance and high demands on environmental compatibility, on static equilibrium and structural safety. The company Testing Bloom and Feuerhardt is based in this European city. In its modern production facilities, Testing, one of the most renowned German providers of complete construction material testing laboratories, manufactures testing machines, premium laboratory devices, as well as stainless steel laboratory equipment of the highest quality. Our product portfolio contains around 3,500 different, mainly standardized products. For new and further developments, we have experienced mechanical engineers, electricians, hydraulic specialists and concrete experts at our disposal. Here, a new Blaine device is being developed in the engineering department. We currently produce the widest range of Blaine devices worldwide from simple hand-operated devices to computer-controlled automatic models. The PC-controlled Blaine device Dukerhoff system with one permeability measuring cell is used exclusively to determine the grinding fineness of cement and specific powdered materials and should only be deployed for this purpose. The same applies to the Blaine device Dukerhoff system with two measuring cells. To determine the grinding fineness of cement, its specific surface area must be established from the air permeability of an accurately defined compacted cement bed. This is done by observing the time taken for a fixed quantity of air to flow through the cement bed. This time is then a measure for the specific surface area, which is indicated in square centimetres per gram. The laboratory, testing equipment and test material must have a temperature of between 18 and 22 degrees Celsius as well as a maximum relative humidity of 65%. Inspect the visible condition of a delivered consignment immediately. Any damage which occurred during transport or a shortfall in quantity must be logged without delay and submitted to us by fax or email. Use the delivery note to verify that the consignment is complete. It must include an electronic Blaine device with connection cable for model 1.0294 with one measuring place, for model 1.0295 with two measuring places, a permeability measuring cell with a perforated disc and a plunger for model 1.0294, two permeability measuring cells, two perforated discs and a plunger for model 1.0295, a tamper, a suction and filling syringe with tube, a 150 milliliter bottle of manometer liquid, a packet of filter discs, a packet of foam filters for the instrument gland, a powder funnel, PC connection cable and Blaine software, operating instructions and an application DVD. Other items not included in the delivery scope, different reference substances, an analytical balance with a resolution of at least 0.01 grams, a fine brush, a bottle for shaking, a vernier caliper accurate to one one hundredth of a millimeter and a depth gauge, a spatula and bottle brush, a measuring spoon, 
a dial gauge for determining remaining distance, a PC with Windows XP or Windows 7 operating system and a free serial interface, or a USB connection with serial interface adapter. Irrespective of the type, the Blaine device must first be set up and aligned on a stable, level and vibration-free surface. The device is now ready for operation. With the aid of the filling syringe with a tube, approximately 60 milliliters of the supplied manometer liquid is sucked into the U-tube. The U-tube must be clean and dry before being filled. The end of the tube is inserted at the left side of the metal casing into the U-tube. Take care that the tube can be seen in the U-tube so that the manometer liquid also reaches the tube. The procedure must be carried out carefully as the gauge only adjusts slowly. The manometer liquid must reach the etched line. If the filling level is exceeded, use the syringe to suck out excess oil. Other components of the Blaine device include side filler hole, an optional dial gauge, measuring section with photoelectric barriers, a U-tube manometer, a permeability measuring cell, and a connection support for the measuring cell. Presentation of model 1.0295 with two measuring cells. The time measurement is performed between the upper and lower photoelectric barriers. Periodically check that the liquid level is at the height of the fill level. Side filler hole. The power supply, main switch and the PC connection can be found at the back. Plug in the power supply cable and connect the interface cable. Switch on the Blaine device at the back. Determining the apparatus constant K. As the Blaine method is a comparative test between a known and an unknown material, a reference sample with a known specific surface area as a comparison is required in order to determine the apparatus constant K. As supplied by the manufacturer, the device is, as a rule, not calibrated. Calibration must be carried out in which the apparatus constant K is determined for the reference substances. This is required later in order to calculate the Blaine value. If the apparatus constants have already been determined, testing can begin immediately. Use the interface cable to connect the PC and the Blaine device. Insert the supplied CD into the relevant drawer in the PC. Open a browser, for example Windows Explorer, to view the contents. We supply the software in four languages. Select the required language with a double click. Select the files from this CD drive. You can copy the files onto a desktop or a directory prepared by you for the program. Select the Blaine.exe file. The starting window of the Blaine software appears on the screen. Communication between the device and PC is configured under Menu Item Tools Interface. A new window opens. Select your interface and press the Accept button. Input of an incorrect interface will display an error. New search. The correct interface has been located and selected. Press the Accept button. Startup also includes entering test relevant parameters. Open the menu item Tools Apparatus Settings. This opens a new window. Inside the Blaine device is a temperature sensor which measures the air temperature during the test. Press the Import button to see the current device value. 
If this deviates from an external reference thermometer, you can adjust it in the offset field. If the device thermometer, for example, is one degree too high, enter an offset of minus one. You can choose between EN and ASTM standard values. The starting time of the pump, as well as the pump capacity of 0 to 100%, can be individually adjusted. As a rule, this is a preset service function. In the output format field, the test result text can be displayed, stored and printed out in two versions. The diameter of the measuring cells and the powder bed height are indicated in the field cell data. Measure the measuring cell with a vernier caliper or with a depth gauge to one-tenth of a millimetre. The perforated disc is inserted into the measuring cell and pressed with a tamper up to the stop. Ensure that the perforated disc is lying flat in the measuring cell. Two paper filters follow. First, determine the internal height, J. The internal dimensions of the measuring cell are measured with the depth caliper from the upper edge of the cell to the filter paper at six different points to 0.1 millimeters and an average taken. With the vernier caliper, the diameter G of the measuring cell is determined at six different points, averaged and recorded in the diameter field. From the lower edge of the collar to the point, the plunger length F is also measured at six different points to 0.1 millimeters and an average taken. Now the powder bed height H can be mathematically determined. This is done according to the following equation. H equals the interior cell dimensions J minus the plunger piston length F. Equation 1. The values are recorded to two places behind the decimal point. In the execution field, enter the number of samples and number of tests performed for determining the apparatus constant. In each case, there are three. The device is not calibrated by the manufacturer. Therefore, it must be calibrated before use. To do this, the apparatus constant has to be determined from a known reference substance. Select the menu item Tools Manage Apparatus Constant for this. A database of the calibration and or reference substances is created. Here, for example, there are three calibration substances of varying fineness to choose from. The known density, porosity and specific surface area of the selected calibration substance must be entered in the corresponding field. The reference name is entered in the name field. The calibration substances can be managed by adding or removing. The apparatus constant A is zero since we have applied a new reference substance. The apparatus constant B is inactive for model 1.0294. Accept stores the entered data. Determining apparatus constants K. Select the menu item Tools Manage Apparatus Constants. The output window changes and in the reference field, the substance to be calibrated can now be selected from the database. Proceed by pressing Continue. From the stored parameters, the software calculates a suggested sample weight in grams accurate to three decimal places. In a preparatory stage, the selected reference substance is shaken for at least two minutes in a bottle with a screw lid in order to dissolve any agglomerates. The bottle is then left to stand for two minutes. In order to distribute the fine particles, the powder bed is then stirred with a clean dry rod. Insert the perforated disc into the clean measuring cell and ensure that it's lying flat on the lower edge. Place a filter paper disc in the measuring cell so that it too is lying flat on the bottom. 
Then, using the analytical balance, the calculated sample weight can be carried out accurately to 0.01 grams. Different weighing tools can be used for this purpose. The powder bed is leveled by lightly tapping the cell wall. A second filter paper is placed on the leveled surface area with the aid of the tamper. The reference material is compacted by gently pressing the plunger so that the lower face of the cup is in contact with the upper edge of the measuring cell. Raise the plunger slowly, rotate it through 90 degrees and press it onto the material again. Finally, slowly withdraw the plunger without disturbing the powder bed. The sample weight is entered in the field. The remaining distance can be fed in using the optionally installed dial gauge or entered by hand. The measuring cell is now mounted on the connection support and fixed in position. The measurement process is initiated by pressing the start button. The test temperature is entered automatically. A pump draws the liquid above the upper light barrier. It flows through the sample material and the liquid level in the U-tube sinks or balances itself out again. In the process, the lead time between the two light barriers is measured and after it has passed the lower light barrier, the measured time is displayed. Measuring time of sample 1, the first measurement is running, followed automatically by a second and third measurement. After three test measurements of sample 1, the measuring cell is removed from the connection support and samples 2 and 3 are prepared and tested as described. Finally, the mean value is calculated from the three measurements of the three samples. Two new apparatus constants for the corresponding calibration substance can be saved. Indicate storage location. The content of the file is indicated by double-clicking. All entered test parameters were stored. How to import the data into an Excel table. The spreadsheet can be formatted according to your preferences and completed in the header and footer with company address and the date. In menu item Tools, Manage Apparatus Constants, you can see the newly determined apparatus constant for the tested reference substance. Calibration or recalibration is carried out for first use, after 1,000 tests, for a different type of filter paper, for another type of manometer liquid, for new perforated discs, for a new manometer tube, and in case of systematic deviations of the secondary reference cement. The apparatus constant is not transferable to other devices, not even to the same models. Determining specific surface areas using cement as an example. Procedure. Enter the freely selectable test parameters in the menu item Tools Apparatus Settings. This is the number of cement samples in which the Blaine measurement should be carried out two as a rule. The number of individual tests per powder bed is indicated in the repetition field, two as a rule. The break time between individual measurements is indicated in the pause field. The after run field refers to how high the fluid level is drawn in above the upper light barrier. First of all, check whether the cement to be tested is already stored in the database. This data can then be called up for a test. Any new data should be entered into the database. To do so, open menu item Tools, Manage Test Material and add the data for a new type of cement. 
Enter the name of the cement in the window, its density and the initially accepted porosity of the bed. The cement is to be compared with reference substance number 2. By adding or removing, current cements can be managed under the menu item Manage Test Material. The cement is saved in the database with the Accept button. The newly applied type of cement is selected in the Test Material field in the launch window. Subsequently, proceed with the test by pressing Next. The software calculates a suggested sample weight from the stored parameters. Lay the perforated disc on the bottom of the measuring cell and lightly press it with a rod. Then insert a paper filter disc and press it onto the perforated disc with a tamper. A sufficient quantity of the cement to be tested is filled into a bottle with a screw lid. Shake the cement for at least two minutes in order to dissolve any agglomerates, then leave the vessel to stand for two minutes. Stir the cement with a clean, dry rod in order to evenly distribute the fine particles. Place the measuring cell on the analytical balance. Then the display is set to zero. Carefully fill the measuring cell with the cement to be tested until the sample weight is reached. Different working tools can be used for this purpose. Level the cement bed by lightly tapping the exterior wall. Insert a filter paper disc and carefully slide it over the powder bed with the rod. Gently press the plunger onto the powder bed so that the lower face is in contact with the upper edge of the measuring cell. Raise the plunger slightly, rotate it through 90 degrees and press it onto the sample again. Slowly withdraw the plunger from the compacted test substance bed. Optionally, a dial gauge can be used to determine possible remaining distance in a compacted cement bed. The dial gauge can be installed on the cell. The display value must be positive. Adjust the value using the button on the display. The dial gauge can be reset when the plunger is located on the upper edge of the cylinder. This should be checked before every test. The cement bed is compacted as previously described. The actual weight is recorded as well as the remaining distance, zero. If the plunger does not come into contact with the cement bed due to too little weight, a new calculation must be carried out with new appropriate porosity. Should a remaining distance arise in the usual compacting, the value must be entered or fed into the remaining distance field. The computer will automatically calculate this remaining distance, V bar, as a new volume, resulting in a new porosity. Both the actual sample weight and the remaining distance are entered in the field. The measuring cell is mounted on the connection support and fixed in position. The measurement process is initiated by pressing the start button. The test temperature is entered automatically. It flows through the sample material and the liquid level in the U-tube sinks or balances itself out again. In the process, the lead time between the two light barriers is measured and after it has passed the lower light barrier, the measured time is displayed. The test process runs automatically. Two consecutive measurements are carried out. Subsequently, Prepare a second cement sample as described and carry out two further tests. 
The four results from two tests of a type of cement are averaged and accurately indicated as a Blaine value in square centimetres per gram to the nearest 10 square centimetres per gram. It's advisable to secure the result. The content of the file is displayed by double-clicking. All entered test parameters were stored. After the tests, remove the measuring cell. Press the cement bed out of the cell from below. Two tests can be carried out simultaneously in the Blaine Dukerhoff device with two measuring cells. The prepared measuring cells are placed side by side. The software is able to differentiate between the two input fields for measuring points A and B. Alkalis are released when mixing cement and water. Immediately remove any wet or dry cement which comes into contact with the skin. If cement gets into your eyes, wash them thoroughly with clean water and seek medical attention immediately. Protective clothing, rubber gloves and glasses should be worn. On request, the measuring distance can be altered by adjusting the sensor distance. This alters all apparatus constants. The device must be recalibrated. If the device has to be shipped, repaired or disposed of, the manometer liquid must be sucked out with the syringe. Do not shake or pour it out. The device may be returned to the manufacturer for repairs.